Uh, this poem, uh, my sister-in-law, uh, Shokwe's wife, Nubia, gave it to me uh, when I was going through a difficult time in my life. She didn't write it, but listen. On August the 25th, 1995, at 11.55 p.m., while struggling with the reality of being a human instead of a myth, the strong black woman passed away without the slightest bit of hoopla. Medical sources say that she died of natural causes, but those who knew and used her know she died from being silent when she should have been screaming, yeah. mm -hmm. smiling when she should have been raging, she died from being sick and not wanting anyone to know because her pain might inconvenience them. She died from an overdose of other people clinging to her when she didn't even have the energy for herself. She died for loving men who didn't love themselves and did only offer her a crippled reflection. She died from raising children alone and being criticized for not doing a complete job. She died from the lies her grandmother told her mother and her mother told her about life, men, and racism. She died from being sexually abused as a child and having to take that truth everywhere she went, every day of her life, exchanging the humiliation for guilt and back again. She died from being back by someone who claimed to love her. And she allowed the battering to go on to show she loved him too. She died from asphyxiation, coughing up blood, from secrets she kept trying to burn away. Instead of allowing herself the kind of nervous breakdown she was entitled to, but only white girls could afford, she died from being responsible because she was the last rung on the ladder and there was no one under her she could dump on. The strong black woman is dead. She died from the multiple births of children she never really wanted, but was forced to have by the strangling morality of those around her. She died from being a mother at 15, a grandmother at 30, and an ancestor at 45. She died from being dragged down and sat upon by unevolved women posing as sisters. She died from pretending the life she was living was a Kodak moment instead of a 20th century post-slavery nightmare. She died from tolerating Mr. Pitiful just to have a man around the house. She died from lack of orgasms because she never learned what made her body happy. And no one ever took the time to teach her. She died because they belong to the, uh, I'm sorry. She died because sometimes she found her arms that were tender. She died because they belonged to the same gender. Mm -hmm. 
She died from sacrificing herself for everybody and everything when what she really wanted to do was to be a singer, a dancer, or some magnificent other. She died from lies of omissions because she didn't want to be accused of holding the black man down. She died from tributes from her counterpart. She should have been matching her efforts instead of showering her with dead words and empty songs. She died from myths that would not allow her to show weakness without being chastised by the lazy and the hazy. She died from hiding her real feelings until they became monstrously hard and bitter enough to invade her womb and breast like angry tumors. She died from always, always lifting something from heavy boxes to refrigerators. The strong black woman is dead. She died from the punishments received from being called a bitch, for being verbal, a dyke for being assertive, and a whore for picking her own lover. She died from never being enough of what men wanted or being too much for the men she wanted. She died from being too black and died again for not being black enough. She died from castration every time somebody thought of her as only a woman or treated her like less than a man. She died from being misinformed about her mind, her body, and the extent of her royal capabilities. She died from knees pressed too close together because respect was never a part of the foreplay that was being shoved at her. She died of loneliness in birthing rooms and aloneness in abortion centers. She died of shocking courtrooms where she sat alone watching her children being lynched. She died in bathrooms with her veins busting open with self-hatred and neglect. She died in her mind, fighting life, racism, and men while her body was carted away and stashed in a human warehouse for the spiritual mutilated. And sometimes, sometimes when she refused to die, when, 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 when she just refused to give in, she was killed by lethal images of blonde hair, blue eyes, and flat butts rejected to death by the OJs, the Quincy's, and the Portiers. Sometimes she was stomped to death by racism and sexism, executed by high-tech ignorance, while she carried the family in her belly, the community on her head, and the race on her back. The strong, silent, shit-talking black woman is dead. Now, now, will the real queen rise? Free the land. Free the land.